Welcome everyone. This is the second live session for our community members and uh, I'm happy to see you all. Uh, as a reminder, I would like to tell you that if you have any issues with the recording and the streaming, just reload your page and uh, click play and you continue watching the video. And the recording is saved into the live event itself, so you can come back anytime and watch it. I am Heine from Merchster. I'm a product expert, and uh, this session is dedicated to you to learn how to use Earthster. So today I will be demoing a bit how to use it in general. I'll walk through the latest feature updates, and I would like to answer as many questions as possible. So during the session, if you have questions, please post them in the chat, and um, I answer as many as possible, and you can also answer each other questions. And that's the whole idea, to create a community and help you get the most out of using Earthstone. And in case you haven't heard yet what is Earthstone, so you sign up, but you're wondering what really it is, it's a full LCA tool where you can, in a visual way, design your, like, model your product's LCA and help also decision makers in your company to make better decisions, including um, C-level people, product designers. It's the idea is that you work together, whether you're an LC expert or just someone who needs to take big decisions in the company. You can use the same tool. And um, exactly, if you have any questions, please post it. There is about a 30 second delay between the streaming and when you actually see what I'm talking about. So there might be some pauses in between when I'm asking you questions, but let's get to it. So I would like to start with a short demo. You might have seen this before. Here, what you can see is a computer mouse, an LCA of a computer mouse. And we call this in Earthster cycles. This is a full life cycle of a computer mouse, but it's easier to just say the cycle of it. And here, what you can see is that in this model, the biggest environmental impact is coming from the production stage. I think now you can see my mouse. It's coming from the production stage. And um, the second biggest environmental impacts is from the use stage. And distribution is the smallest one in this case. And if I click around, so this is a model that we have created already. So this is already one. And we have broken down the computer mouse into different areas. And here, for example, you can see the environmental impacts of called all others. The way to see everything is you adjust the threshold to the level that you would like to see. So if I now adjust it to zero, you can clearly see that that one that was bundled into it is related to structural elements. The, the threshold is super useful when you have a really big and complex cycle. You can see that, okay, I want to see only the 10%, like it's actually the opposite. You eliminate the 10 percent of the environmental impact that you don't want to see the smallest impacts so you need you see what's really important and now for example if we really want to dig into this cycle i would say that okay clearly electronics is the biggest impact and from electronics is the printed wiring board and now what i can do is explore where really the environmental impact is coming from i click on the explore button this fetches data from the database. So this is an equipment process. And here, what you can see in a gray, a bit darker circles is where that data is coming from. So in the actual, how is that equipment data set is built? And it's really useful for both helping you to choose the correct equipment processes and to see where you could improve your product. And this case, as you can see, this one is all about the circuit board production and anything related to it. And you can, <laughs> there's even gold in it, which is bringing one of the biggest environmental impact. And uh, this helps you design better cycles and make better decisions. 
Now let me zoom out. When you click the little house icon, it resets the diagram, especially when you have zoomed out this much. The easiest is to click there. And now you see how it looks. And uh, another one that I would like to show you is the use face of the mouse. As you can see in this model, the second biggest impact after production is the use phase, and it's actually coming from using the mouse. If I open the drawer of the use phase, here you can see two bundles. One is using the mouse. In there, I have added the, pro the process of electricity consumption during 10 years, and this is a custom process. Custom processes are kind of like a smart folder that is able to calculate for you. Here, you add all the data based on however you want to define the process. So in this case, we are putting all the processes that would equivalent to be a one year. So for example, one year of power usage while being active. So you're using the mouse and the same thing for one year, the equivalent of how much is on standby. And here, if you go into the process, you can even see notes, how it is calculated. And I recommend always keep notes on your assumptions and why you use something. If I go back here, you see the different processes and this one calculates. Now, let me show you what happens if I say that the mouse is actually going to be used for 15 years it's automatically recalculates. It's an instant calculation, it's super fast. And this is actually one of our latest feature updates. It's we made our search even faster. It used to be fast and now it's even faster. And uh, I think many of you will enjoy that. Then, uh, exactly. So this is a simple how our search works. And now I would like to show you one more thing that how to add processes. So every stage of the life cycle has its own drawer. So for example, if I want to add anything to the production stage, I would click add, add new here. This is this search functionality searches our whole database. It searches from pro, like EchoInvent, Exiobase, and any cycle a user has published publicly. So what would I show you as an example? I'm going to show you how it would look like if we want to add a steel piece into our model. You write steel, and you start seeing many, many results. Here you can see that it's 1,400 results. What you do next, if you have too many results, you can either add another keyword, so you can add several keywords or start straight away filtering out. When you hover over a process, you can say that show me only a certain tag or don't show me those things. And I'll show you, for example, still, I know that Chromium exists. I can specify that show me only Chromium still. Now my results are a bit better. Now the next thing I could do is, uh, I could say that show me only echo invent, or I can change my view based on geography. But as you can see now, if I'm going down here, you start seeing different type of labels. These are a guideline to help you choose. Now, at this point, I'm looking for a steel product, so I would choose material product. But if I would be adding to my cycle, like processing of that steel, so for example, creating that still uh, piece, I would choose a processing uh, type of process. But let me show you, for example, we take this one, clicking the info button opens the description of the process itself. This data is coming straight from the database itself. So if it's an equipment process, like this one is, whatever equipment has added about the process, you see it here. And uh, same thing with the USIO. They have their own things. And what you can do is that when you're like, you like that, okay, oh, I want to add this process, you click add. Here, you specify that I'm going to use 
0.10%. And you click Run Editing. As you can see, it already calculated it and added it into my model. But I can see that I have already a question. Yep, Paul is asking that, uh, did I say Axio base? Is that included Urgster already? It's not yet included, but it's coming soon. Mm, at some point in the beginning of next year, I don't have an actual date yet, but we are already working on it too, making it compatible. That's one of the best benefits of using Urgster, that you know that any single data you add into your model is compatible automatically with your own model. Doesn't matter if you add them in kilos or kilowatt hours. The one the, and most important thing when you're adding processes is to add it based on the functional unit, the production unit and functional unit that you have created during when you created your cycle. And here I'm going to show you what is for this computer mouse. When you click on the menu icon, this one, it's called scale. You click here and here you see what I have set up as a production unit. I just said one unit, but now here I could say one mouse. And this helps also whoever is reading or checking your LCA to understand better what they're seeing in front of them. And as a functional unit, I have added that it's 10 years. Here I could say 10 years of life. I I can add as many functional units as I find useful. So for example, 10 years of life, I could add uh, the kilowatt hours of how many, or like actually more about how many hours per day I'm using the mouse. And now what's interesting is that if I would add a new functional unit, you just click here and add one. If I add of hours of use, now, the important thing would be here to add as the value, it needs to be equivalent for the 10 years of life. So in this case, it would be, let's say I would be using the mouse eight hours a day. I would have to multiply by, multiply that by the 10 years of life. So the amount of work days I've been using it and the 10 years of life. And at the moment, I'm not gonna calculate it, but that's what you need to add in there. Because when they're equivalent, what you can do is do comparisons. And functional units are an amazing way to do comparisons. And actually, that's something that uh, in other LCA tools and LCA literatures, usually they only talk about functional units. In Erdster case, your functional unit is more about the production unit. So this this helps you also model your product better because if you, when you're talking about your production unit, you know that you are modeling one unit or one ton of unit, it, you get totally different results depending what you were really modeling. And the functional unit is all about how do you use it? How do you measure it? And because of this, you can compare it easily to other products. So for example, in this case, the mouse, this one, I have claimed that it's gonna last 10 years. But now if I make a better version of this mouse, I put nicer electronics, better materials, and it's gonna last 15 years. Now, how can I compare the environmental impact of a better product? And actually by adding functional units. I'll show you one of the comparisons that I have made already. Let me see. I think this doesn't have yet. No. Nope. I'll show you already made one. When you have already created cycles, you end up in your dashboard. There's the cycles tabs that show up all your cycles and you have separately the comparisons. And here I have an example. And let me see this one, my demo computer mouse here you can see comparisons of three different mouses. One of them is what I was showing you, the computer mouse for demos. And the first one is another version. And the last one is an echo event process. The way you can add more comparisons is you can just click add new reference. And now here is the magic bit, functional units and production units. So instead of saying, 
1.3 years, I can say, so now I'm comparing one unit versus one unit. Let me edit it. So one unit here, this also, as you can see, the graph automatically updates to reflect my selection. And depending on how the cycles have been created, you have the option to choose from several functional units. Really, really useful for doing what if scenarios and uh, you can even compare that if you have if you modeled your product that it was in 2015 it looked like this now it looks like this and even you can create projections and it's super simple to do what you do when you have an existing cycle already that you have created you hover over the menu icon you click duplicate create a copy and you can start editing it and that way it makes your work much, much faster. Now, exactly. This is the basics of EarthStorm. So this is a basic demo. When you create your own cycle, you just click here. You have the option of start it from a template or from scratch. And it guides you through the whole process of setting up functional units and production units. But what I would like to show you today, and actually before that, does anyone have any questions? And if someone jumped in later on, welcome. And um, I'd like to remind you exactly, just refresh your page if you lose connection. And uh, if you have any questions during the session, write it in the chat. And um, you can also post it in, a for in our forum. I will share it later. Later on, I'm gonna present to you our forum where I would like every one of you to engage with the community. Let me wait for a few moments more if anyone has any questions. This it's a bit difficult to multitask, but I would like to be this session as uh, interactive as it can be through a streaming service. Okay, looks like that there's no questions. One thing you might have noticed, depending on when you when you logged in last time, but at least from the latest uh, community session, we have updated the bar itself, how it looks. Yep, we have questions, yes. <laughs> so just regard, Ammar is asking, just regarding the functional unit for example, you use a unit of computer mouse. And either I'm missing half of the question or Ammar was once more examples of the functional unit. Let me show you. So I go back into the, the mouse, go again to scale. And here, the functional unit. So uh, the functional unit is 10 years of life. And I could put here, and I'm going to just put 2,000 hours of use using that mouse. And what I'm still here claiming is that it's equivalent. So during 10, 10 years, I will be using my mouse 2,000 hours of, per year. Ah, exactly. So follow-up question. So normally for a functional unit, it's one kilo, or could it be an economic unit? Yes, it can be. So the production unit is up to you to define what it is. It can be kilos, it can be value. Let me show you our, we have created a simple uh, LCA, an organizational LCA, and and it's actually a projection of what it could be for us for this year, for example. Here is one of these projections I have. I'm going to show you this one. And here we have created many, many different functional units. Here you can see uh, most of our environmental impact. And I'm not sure if it's surprising for you, 
But it was really surprising for me when we created the cycle is that our biggest environmental impact comes from our sales and marketing effort. We're using Google Ads and similar. But let me show you the functional unit. So going back again to scale. Now here we have many, many different types. We have equivalent production units. Here you can see, because this is an organization also. We have set it up that it's for one year of Earth Store existing, equivalent to 12 months, huge amount of revenue in dollars, equivalent of in euros, and let me see, it doesn't want to let, doesn't let me scroll. Here you can see many functional units also that is equivalent to one year of production. So one year of Earthster existing. And in our case, we are assuming that in these numbers, what you see here is we have 229 paying customers, more than 2000 LCA studies done with Earthster, and almost 55,000 hours of using Earthster, which means that, for example, in the use space of our cycle, there is that how much our customers are using. And these are all projections. But here is where you can see that it's up to you to decide what is your production unit. What, what are you really measuring? Is it one product? Is it, uh, is it a project? Is it a holiday? Anything like that. So you are the one who decides the scope. So Erster is really flexible in this and lets you do it. I hope this answered the question. And uh, is it possible to modify the functional unit between the mass allocation and et economic allocation? As long as they are equivalent to each other, yes. And you can add functional units later on. One thing to keep in mind is that, let's say, in the middle of modeling your cycle, you decide that, ah, no, I don't want it for one year. I want to do it for 10 years. Now, what, what it's going to do, it's basically nothing. It doesn't change your numbers. It doesn't multiply these automatically. You have to remember then to go and change everything. So I don't recommend like changing the production unit afterwards unless you really remember to change everything. What's better in that case is just create a new one, create a new cycle, or create a copy and then modify that one. And uh, yeah, so this is one of the biggest so important things to know about functional units and production units. And what I wanted to mention exactly one thing that is new is this bar. Now it looks a bit different. And you might have noticed that now there's a new question mark here. When you click on that one, you can access either the documentation or you can take the tour again. And now it's a much easier, like for example, because when you take the tour, it guides you through fully how to create a cycle. And uh, this tour is um, triggered when you are, um, what's that? When you create a new cycle. So you have to there to create a cycle, click new, and then it will help you guide through it. But now also another new thing we have is the documentation itself. When you click on it, it opens in a new tab and you land in our totally new documentation. So knowledge base where you have information, for example, simple guides, how to get started with your stir. You can go through them one by one, go through, you can click the next one, or you can search for articles. For example, I would say cycles and let's see what the system shows us. And they're all, it shows several articles that the word cycle shows up in there. For example, this one, data in Earthster, you can browse into it and see what's happening or how we handle data. And uh, this will be soon available from inside the app in a way that it opens in the side. And we are really happy about it. If you find outdated data, please send us a message. We will update it and let me show you here. As a reminder, so 
I'm the one responsible in Earthster to train our users, take care of customers, take care of community. And uh, you can reach me anytime at pineatearthster.org or LinkedIn. And especially if you have any questions, how to use Earthster, you need help finding, for example, an LCA consultant. We have many partners. Uh, I would be happy to hook you up with one of them and um, yeah, help you get started. Let me show you, let me continue. So let's go back to Earthster here. Any questions, any other questions so far? I lost the LinkedIn here. I can see the questions. Now, meanwhile, you are thinking of questions. I'm going to start showing a really cool feature that I think many of you will love. I'll go back to the computer mouse example. And um, there is a new functionality that helps you in an easy way to decide or to set up the, whether the process that you have added into Earthster, is it an input to your LCA or an output? And this is how you notice the difference. So now I'm inside the cycle. I opened already the drawer. And as you can see here, there is a tiny icon. And when you hover over it, it says input click to reverse. If I click this, it automatically updates the environmental impact to be an output of the lifecycle assessment. Super useful when you're building your waste management and uh, you don't need to think that, oh, do I need to add this data as a minus or not? You just click that icon and then the system decides it, like sets it correctly. If you would put yourself a minus, it might change it. And you can also do that from when you click on the process itself, the process information. Here, it does the same thing. You click, it updates the data straight away. As you can see, now it's a positive value. And this helps you model your SEA much better. And let me show you, if we go back to the new space here, for example, I have created separately a bundle called end of life. And in there, you can see that this is an output. So getting rid of the box is an output. And here, for example, in my model, I'm missing the end of life of the mouse. And this would be the next thing to add. But really, really useful. You can just click on it. And now it's an input to my life cycle. And like this, it's an output. And you always know it by hovering over it, which one it is, in case you don't like the, if you don't notice from the icon itself. Any questions related to whether it's an input or an output process? And meanwhile, exactly, remember, just feel free to contact me if you have any questions related to using Earthster. Or, for example, if you have ideas, what you, would you like us to go through in the next session? I'm really, really happy to hear those thoughts. And in addition, what I'm looking for now is um, if you are interested in becoming a user, like for user testing. So we are doing periodically user testing in group sessions or in individual sessions. And if you're interested, just send me an email and uh, I'll hook you up with our user tester. And that way we can improve Earthster together. OK. Looks like no questions. <laughs> that is, let's wait for a tiny moment longer. Meanwhile, I check my cheat sheet, what else I needed to show you. Yes, the last thing that I needed to show you today is our, our forum. 
I'm going to share that tab. Here, we have a brand new forum. And as you can see, it's so new that there is currently only my messages in there. What I, what I would like you to do is if there's any questions that come up now or later on, like after the session, you're like, oh, I forgot to ask this, please post it on the forum. And uh, someone needs to dare to start it. And the idea is to create a community who helps each other, who helps, for example, helps we can help each other build better cycles. That one, you can do it in the showcase your LCA. You, uh, you take your Esther LCA, you put it out there, ask for feedback. It's like, oh, what do you think? Should I use this? Should I use that? And that's you can either use the showcase your LCA or questions about LCA. And um, that way, it's this. It's the forum. The idea behind it is that we collaborate. The whole ideology behind Earthster is that also we want that LCAs in general improve. And by putting out publicly your LCA results, you help other LCA practitioners to make their better. And also we are helping the whole world to make better decisions. So for example, carbon accounting is great, but it's not enough to make good decisions. With a full LCA, you have more know-how about that, okay, what is the impact on the, the water usage, for example? It's not only C CO2 that uh, is bad for the environment. It's, there's many, many other things that you need to consider, especially based on where your factory or where your business is located. A good example is that in Spain, water usage is a much, much bigger issue than in Finland. Finland has a lot of lakes and a lot of water. Spain doesn't. Spain has hot summers. <laughs> Finland doesn't. So I challenge you, use the forum to connect with each other. You can introduce yourself there, connect on LinkedIn. Even now, you can use the networking feature. and. Uh, Little by little, we'll create a community who will change the world and make it more sustainable. That's the ultimate goal. And now let me see, there's other questions I see on the comments. Frederick is asking, could you send your Earthster cycle directly for critical LCA review or is it needed to make a separate report? Interesting question. For a critic, we don't, Earthstar doesn't do critical reviews. What you need to do is um, you get a consultancy who does such things. We have partners who are doing it. For example, RRS, Gaia, um, Deloitte, they do the critical re review for you. And what we can do is hook you up with the ones we know, or you can get your own and you can share your whatever models you have created in Earthster with them. They can dig into them, see every single bits and pieces, what they need to. For example, either the visual way they can get access to your cycle, or you can download the data as a CSV file and send that one. And this consultancy will be the one who does the critical review for you. They do their report and they do their stamping that, yes, this LCA has been created in an amazing way. It meets the standards and you can brag on the internet how good your product is. That's what critical reviews are for. But unfortunately, there's no automatic way. So if you need help with that, you can contact me and I'll help you find the right resources for it. And that's also something that you can post on our forum to say that, oh, any companies out there who would like to do a critical review on my product, um, maybe someone will say yes. Or for sure, someone will say yes. That's something that it's often done for cycles. OK, any other questions related to using Artster? Anything, anything about the new features? What I could meanwhile show you while I wait for your questions, I'll show you one thing that we went through last time. And that is the releases. Because that topic comes up often. And it's an important one 
to know what they are. Exactly, I'm in the right workspace. Releases are kind of like a snapshot of your cycle. It's You can keep track of the evolution of your own cycle. And when you go into a, cy a cycle, when you don't have a release yet, it's considered a draft. Let me go back here. Here you can see many, many drafts. Here's a draft, there's several. And the ones that don't have any tag next to them, that means that it has a release. And uh, the important thing with releases is that when you have a release and you have connected your cycle with either your own cycle, or for example, you have asked for data from your suppliers. This is a really good cycle for you to show, look, I went to the mini menu and clicked on the last item called uh, data sources. It opens this view. Here, you can see that I have utilized eight equipment processes. When I click on it, I can see everything, which ones. When you click on the change impact category, you can see, for example, water use. It just updates your views and you're able to see it based on that. But now what's interesting here is that I have here one process for our test organization. And this one is a cycle called the piece that you asked for. If I want to see what is it really, I click on the info button and I can see that, okay, this is a cardboard box where what I have done myself is I have asked the LCA of the cardboard box from a test organization and they have made changes. And uh, now that data that they have modified the template that I have sent them, it's connected with my LCA. So anytime they do a change, it will be reflected on mine. And really soon, probably in the next week, week or two, you'll see here a little flag when there is new data and you, you'll get a new button of saying, update my data. But that's, that's now in testing, user testing. And another one you can see that here, so I'm logged in as Erdster, our own account is called Erdster. And here you can see that, okay, how come there is Erdster on my own cycle list? When you expand here, you can see that I have a cycle called structure elements. So I'm utilizing one of my own cycles in this cycle. The same thing, I go in here, I can check it out which one it is. I click here, view as a cycle. This is how it looks. Whoops, didn't like it. Then I'm not gonna show you how it looks. <laughs> nice demo effect. So it's I'm utilizing my own cycle, which means that I have in my workspaces a cycle called this one is in the workspace called Heinz Workspace. I'm the owner, and because there's no release, it didn't show you that. Now what I can do is go ahead and create a release for that. Here is the structure element. Click here. I just click issue a release because this cycle is ready. And I can put their notes. But for now, I issue a release. And I can view my own cycles, what has happened to them. I can edit the data afterwards. But this is a snapshot of like I can keep track what has happened to my cycle. So for example, let's go back to the computer mouse. Whoops, I click too fast. Here, computer mouse, releases. As you can see, I have only one release and uh, doesn't even have notes. But now if we go back to the data sources, I should be able, so if there would have been any changes, this would have updated and I'm able to see it. Look, now this is the actual cycle itself. And this is one of the reasons why it's really important to use releases because without the release, a cycle is not searchable in the process list. 
you cannot add it to, at the moment, you cannot add it as a comparison either because it's not searchable. So if you want to be able to utilize your own cycles or invite suppliers to give you data, you always have to have a release. And the same thing, if someone invited you to become a, customer, a supplier, you need to always save a release to be able to like communicate the data changes that you have just done. And this is, uh, yeah, this is all about releases. Also, you need a release to be able to download the cycle. So if you go into settings here, you have the button export cycle. And here you have uh, what you can see in my view. We have our account has a full equipment license. So I can just click here and say export the data. And uh, this is how it looks. When you export your cycle, you get it as a CSV file. And with that data that you have exported from Erster, you can utilize it in reports, in any other tools, or just create your own graphs if Erster is not visual enough. And for example, here you can see the basic data of the cycle, then the different impact categories, values for them. And when you scroll all the way to the bottom of it, what you can see is the PEF impact category. So product environmental footprint. Uh, it's the methodology from the EU Commission. And that gives you many, many more um, impact categories. Super useful if you need to create a, mm, more thorough reports, let's say that way. And all for being able to download the PEF data, you need a full equipment license. And if you need one, Please let me know, and uh, we can get you. We can get you one through our sir. Let me go back. I lost my tab here. Let's get this tab instead. Okay. Any questions? Any comments, any fe feature wishes, you can also do that. The forum is perfect to add their feature wishes because you might not be the only one who would like to have that feature. And let's say there is a feature that many, many people upvotes. It's going, our, of course, this is communicated to our development team and they're saying that, oh, great. So many people want to have this feature. Let's put it priority over this other feature that we were thinking that is more important. That is a really good way of interacting also with our third team. And we are reading the forum constantly. So use it, interact with others, and um, help each other become better LCA professionals. OK. Any questions? I'm still waiting for questions. It's, it's a pity that there's a 30 second delay or it might be in some cases a bit more. Because from my side, that was it. That's what I wanted to show you. So we have the new help section, a bit better looks, everything is faster, and uh, added a really easy way of determining whether your process is an input or an output will help you a lot building your cycles, especially the waste management one. And of course, the forum. The forum is live, and now I need great people who dare to post their something to start a conversation. And uh, yes, one more thing that I have forgotten to say. In case you don't have an Earthster account yet, you can sign up at earthster.org and create your own account for free. We get the free account, we call it community account. Um, you can utilize up to 20 economic processes, as many cycles as you want. You can invite your team members, try it out together. You can edit and modify the cycles together. Through workspaces, you're able to decide 
you decide who gets to do what, because a really good way of using workspaces that, for example, you have created a model, but you want to invite your boss to see and click around, but you don't want them to be able to destroy anything you have done, what you do is add them into your workspace with the um, view only access rights. And that way, they see what you have done, what you've been working on. They're even able to duplicate the cycle themselves and um, play around with the data without destroying anything that you have created. Really useful. And exactly, so that's the community one. You can use it, try it, and once you are, once you feel com comfortable that okay, now I really need to get serious with my LCA. I recommend you subscribe to the business. You have the option in app option that you add your credit card. You just say subscribe to business and um, pay, do the subscription through the Stripe payment process. Or if your company doesn't like credit card payments, contact us at info or contact me, but contact us at infoadverser.org and we can also send you an invoice. That's a good way of subscribing to business. And what business license gives you is up to 200 equipment processes. And in addition, maybe the most important thing in there is that you can have your cycles private. In a community plan, in the free plan, every cycle you create is publicly available for other users to see and when they are searched. And uh, with the business, you are in control. You have full control that, OK, this cycle I would like to share publicly with everyone as a stakeholder management. For example, you want to showcase how good your product is. You put it out publicly or how, like there's several levels. And or you can decide that, no, 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 our LCAs is only for us and for our eyes only. And you keep them private. And those are one of the biggest benefits to subscribe to business. And there's many more. And another thing that I mentioned is if you need to be able to download the PEF related data or be able to modify equipment processes, for example, importing them as a custom process, then you need a full equipment license. And that's regardless of whether you have a business license or community. It's equipment's pricing model is based on users. And Erdsters is based on accounts. We have unlimited users. And that's why you need a separate license for that. OK, that's it from my side. I'm going to wait again for more questions. Show you again the Erster website. Just go there, sign up. What, when you sign up, if you haven't created an uh, account yet, you're going to start getting from me automatic onboarding emails that helps you get started. And if you have any questions, contact me. So you'll have in your email, my email anyway. So it's an easy way to contact me if you need help. And that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this session and it was useful. And if you have any questions, post, you can still post it here in the comments or put it in the forum. And here's again the web page for the forum. And I would be happy to answer them there. And also, like we have a bigger team to answer on the forum. Right on the channel here. Any questions? And if not, then I would say thank you all for watching this session and hope to see you soon in the next one. The idea is to have them every month and uh, you'll get an invitation to join the next one and it's about in a month. And uh, as a reminder, we have a great session coming up next week with Gaia and it's about uh, supply chains and connected LCAs. I recommend you join that also. You find the event inside LinkedIn, you just go to Erdster and join the event. And that way you can also, that's also a live event so you can watch the recording afterwards. 
But that's it from my side. Thank you and see you next time.